Hey all you backyard explorers, Mr. T here again on another beautiful day to be outside. We are hiking down to the deep brook here at the sanctuary and we're going to be doing a little stream study today, hence the net. So the creatures we're going to be looking for here are what we call invertebrates, mostly. Uh, the invertebrates are animals that don't have a backbone, invertebrate, no backbone, no vertebrae. And those little creatures like Dobson fly and caddis fly and all these midges and wonderful creatures like that, they're able to tell us just how healthy this water is. There are some that are very, very sensitive to pollutants and high temperatures and run off from people's yards and houses and pesticides and fertilizers on people's lawns. All the stuff you don't want to be doing uh, so you can keep the watershed here healthy. Again, watershed is the area that flows into this stream over here. We're set up now down on our little shoulder on the stream. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using our trusty kick net and I'll go over how this works to be able to you can see it's got some very fine mesh back here and this goes onto the bottom of the stream in this area right behind me back here where I'm circling with the handle these are what we call the riffles now the riffles are those tiny little waves in the shallow water this is where those little invertebrate creatures the wee beasties are all holding onto the rocks their nymph stages uh, the nymph is part of their life cycle. So that nymph stage where they're living under the water and they haven't come out of the water yet, like a dragonfly or a damselfly, they are laid their eggs under the water. Those eggs hatch into a nymph. The nymph lives underwater, clings to these rocks here, and then eventually comes out and turns into an adult where it flies out. It's called an emergent. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to sort of kick around the rocks gently in front of here, rinse them off so that the water, the stream, carries those little nymphs into this net. We'll then put our net into some fresh water in this tub, not for a long time because they don't like it warm, remember. So we're going to sort of check them out. We'll use our extremely scientific implements to be able to get them out of the tub of water and into onto our observation platform right here. Yeah, they're plastic spoons and forks. And then I also have a couple of specimen sort of jars, I guess, little little single serving sample things here that uh, we'll be able to put them into so that we can get a closer look. We're going to use that lens that we made, that macro lens that we had made on another episode, and we're going to get real close-up pictures of these little creatures. And hopefully we find some of the more sensitive ones. Uh, I'll be putting up the chart and a link to the chart that tells you who you're looking for in this stream with the hopes that you've got ones that are very, very sensitive little creatures so that uh, they're able to survive. Hopefully we've got a nice clean stream over here. Uh, I think we probably do, but it's always good to make sure. Let's go to work. I'm going to come in just a little bit further down and do another little kick. See what we find. Ooh, we got somebody. Let's go take a look. So we're back at our little lab over here. And we've got our net full of uh, wee beasties. And we're going to turn the net inside out into some of this fresh water that we just got from the stream. So I'll put this over here. I'm going to gently, don't want to hurt any of these guys. Gently turn it inside out like this, rinse it off in the water. Ooh, sun's coming out. 
So now what we'll do, I find that the easiest way to do this is I like to put this against a white container, the white backdrop, because that allows me to go through it much more easily and see what might be in there. So I'm going to have a little search through this and uh, we'll get some close-ups of who we find. To give you an idea of just how macro or even micro some of these are, you can see if you look closely, I'll get us nice and close in there, but you can see a couple little things swimming around. Little, there we go. Here, I'll use the fork to point a couple of them out. There's a couple guys right there. There's somebody else over here. So you really have to be patient when you're looking around at all of these to see just who might be moving and who might be sitting still or clinging to a leaf or clinging to a rock. So we're going to go through these and try to pull a couple out into our specimen jars and get really close to them. All right, so after some intense searching, managed to find some little friends over here that we have in these sample jars. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these and I'm going to try to get them very, very carefully with our scientific implements onto the lids over here so that they're still in a little bit of water and so that they're healthy and happy. And I'm going to try to get the macro lens nice and close, but still enough that maybe we can get some video because they really are the teeny of tiniest. So let's see how we do and get you guys some, uh, get you guys some good pictures. So our first guy is this wonderful little worm. You can see holding on to some sediment here. Just poked right through, sort of feeling his way around, figuring out what's going on. Now the neat thing is, is when you get this close to these, they're pretty, uh, pretty much see-through. So you can see the organs, the digestive system right there. You can kind of see uh, what they've been eating. Look at all this. I mean, you can see it is like they've got invisible skin. It's really incredible. Now remember, this lens that we're using to see this world is one that we made out of an old, an old scanner. Just found the lens. If you go back to our other video where we learned how to make these in the pasture, you can use it to uh, to do this program as well. Wow. You can see this is the nymph stage. And right at the back over there is where the wings are developing. And now they'll shed this exoskeleton again and again and again as they grow inside of it. And then they'll have a brand new exoskeleton on the inside which is soft so when they they actually crack out of their own back and uh, split open come out of this exoskeleton this sh sort of shell and uh, in order for the new one to be bigger than the old one it's soft and they actually pump themselves up with water to stretch out the soft new exoskeleton until it hardens into a bigger one. It's pretty amazing. We call those their exuvia. There we go. Hello there. There's its little head. And see, he's using his head kind of like a foot. Sorry, I'm trying to... He's very active. I'm trying to keep up with him. Now, 
He's got this interesting tail back here, which is actually, I believe, where they breathe. Look at that. You can see the six legs. This guy might have had a little incident with his one of his front legs. It almost looks like five and a half legs. And then back here. Wow. That's actually where they breathe. How amazing is that? I can't believe this, but the one that we've got coming up right here is one of the ones I'm most excited about. The reason you might not believe it is because you might be just saying, hey, uh, hey, Mr. T, that's just a bunch of rocks and pebbles. Teeny, teeny, tiny ones. And I'm going to say to that, aha, you fell for the oldest trick in the book. This is actually a saddle caddisfly. The caddisfly nymph makes its little house here by gluing together a whole bunch of stones, a whole tube of stones. Some use stones, some use plants, some weave these little nests for themselves to live in so that they don't get eaten, so that they're well camouflaged and well protected. So you can kind of just see the green right through there where that looks like a little stone has fallen off. But he's in there. He's got a little tube that he's living in. So fantastic. He makes his own cement, his own super glue to create the house. And then when they get too big for the house, they leave it and they'll go make another house. Okay, so some of you might be thinking, hey, Mr. T, we'd love to get involved too and go look for some cool stuff like macroinvertebrates in the stream or the pond or in some other body of water nearby. And you're thinking, but I don't have a net. So there's two things you could do. Number one, you can order one off the internet. That is a possibility. They have them on there at all kinds of educational websites and you know your regular retail sites. Uh, but what you could do is you can make one of your own nets out of everyday things that you may have in your own home. So let's take a look. Here, an old white t-shirt, like so. We're going to take an old clothes hanger and we'll take a piece of string. We'll need some scissors and that's about it. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our coat hanger and we're gonna undo it. You could use other wire or anything like that that you might have around. We'll straighten it out a little bit right here. And then what I'm going to do, or anything like that that you might so have I'm around. Find we'll straighten the it out the bottom of the shirt right here. We got straighten the top out, of the shirt right there. Out. Here's the bottom straighten of the shirt, out. and you can there's see that there's this want. hem right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut a hole in this hem so that we can feed the wire in between the two pieces right here. So let's find the side right here. We'll get the side. And on the inside, we'll cut ourselves a little bit of space right there. All right, now all we have to do make it easier on is feed this through the hem all the way. We'll do this back up. Now you may want to use some pliers for this. Be careful so that you don't cut yourself on the wire. Again, use 
parent supervision. This one out a little bit. Now, what we'll do is we'll take the bottom because we want that nice flat bottom so that, and would you look we at that? Put it on there. We so we'll curve this. A nice net here. And we'll but curve this. we're not done yet because, However, of course, we want it. They'll all come out the this side, sleeves and the, the bottom top here. nice and flat. So, what we're going to do, there we go. This is where our string comes in. We're going to fold this over like so and fold this one all the way around like this wrap the arms around we'll take a string it's really this easy it's not the prettiest but it works tie right there. There's probably some better knots I could use, but for the sake of time, there we go. And ta-da! We have ourselves a net. Now you can try attaching it to something if you'd like, but you might just want to have a hand in on it so that it's right there. The bottom is there and then everything flows inside. And it will flow inside even though you don't have the mesh. Uh, if you're finding you have some problem with that, then you can take a pen, poke little holes through it, tiny holes, so that you get a bit better flow. Uh, you can poke it with other things. You can also make tiny little cuts, but I suggest something uh, like a toothpick almost would be perfect to poke little holes back here if you need a little bit of a better flow. You'll still catch plenty of specimens in here. Now, you can also, just as you're doing this, take the rocks, put them in, scrub them off, Mix up a little bit, take the rocks, put them in, scrub them off, put the rocks back. It will work. So have some fun, get out there, and go explore. And if you need a little help in figuring out all those little creatures that you found in the stream, consider downloading the Audubon Naturalist Society's Creek Critters app, available in the App Store and on Google Play.